Hey, what is going on everybody? Uh, welcome back to another exciting episode in the Let's Build That Out.com YouTube channel. I uh, hope you guys are having a fabulous morning. Uh, today's lesson is going to be episode two of the calculator application. Uh, hopefully you guys were able to follow along with the last episode. If you guys missed that, you guys can look for the playlist link down below in the description. Uh, let's go ahead and look at today's lesson and figure out what exactly we want to do, right? So last video, we built out a Z stack, a V stack, and a bunch of H stacks inside of the main body of our content view here. And today's lesson, I want to transform this entire view to look a little bit more like this. We have these gray buttons, these darker gray buttons, and also the orange buttons on the right. So how do we want to go about transforming our application, right? Well, as you can see, we have a two-dimensional array of buttons right here. And uh, each of these elements are just simple string values. And then down here, we are iterating over the buttons here and then another iteration using the text and a button like so. So this guy is actually just a simple string uh, representing one of these guys inside of this grid. So the way I'm going to actually uh, transform these buttons into this view over here is to utilize a nice little trick inside of Swift. And uh, what I will use is just a simple enumeration. And the enumeration is going to be called a calculator button. Uh, I think that's a pretty decent name. So uh, the question is, what do I want to do with this button, right? Well, I am going to iterate through all of the little items instead of here. So let me start off with something very simple here. Uh, I'm going to use the case of zero and let's say the case of one, the case of two and the case of three. So we have uh, four cases in here right now and you can list out uh, all of the rest of these numbers if you wanted to do so. So I'm going to go up to six for now. And uh, the next thing I want to do is to actually uh, list out the operators as well. So in other words, we have the equals, we have the plus, we have the minus, minus. Uh, I think we have the multiply as well, so multiply. And then finally, we have the division. I'm just going to call it divide for now. And then lastly, we have some of these buttons at the very top, AC, the plus, minus, and the set of percentage or a modulus. Not exactly sure, but I'll just call it. Uh, let's say the AC, we have the plus, minus, and let's just use percent for uh, this guy right here. Okay, so now that we have this enum right here, so some people call it enum, enum, uh, it's actually enumeration, but I like to say enum. Uh, this guy right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these values right here with all of these cases here. And I guess if you haven't done this before, it might be a little confusing. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to declare the buttons array. So might as well remove that as well. Uh, I'm going to declare this as a two dimensional array of calculator buttons like that. And then each one of these rows are just simply going to be, uh, let's start off with one and two and dot three right here. And also the plus. So basically I'm trying to draw out this row right here, here and here. So. Uh, how exactly do we want to uh, modify this code right now? Well, what you can do is for the one, two, three, and plus, right? This button right here was previously a string value. So the text takes in a string value here. And what you can do to make this compile uh, easily is to, you know, give your enum value here. Let it be a type string like so. And then once you do that, I believe you can just access the raw value like that to get the actual string representation of each one of these cases here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and resume and hopefully I can see something inside of my uh, preview on the right side. And you see we have one, we have two, three, and the plus over here. So this is pretty much how we are starting off in today's video. Uh, you can, you know, modify this to be the four, uh, the five, and let's see the six. And what is above the plus is the minus. Uh, command option P to resume this guy. Maybe hit a stop and play. I think I need a comma here. Okay, so once your code is, uh, you know, all the errors are gone, we can get this to show up. 
Okay, so this is looking kind of okay. You know, things can be a little bit better. But uh, let's move on and talk about the background color or the actual uh, string representation of the button here. So obviously this is four and we want the number or the digit representation. So let's talk about, uh, let's use the background color first. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go inside of my enumeration. And the way I'm going to figure out the background color is to use a switch statement. And let's first define a variable for this enumeration. And the variable is going to be the color. And let's just do a switch statement right here. Let's actually switch on itself. And so if I am a zero, then I'm going to use the background color of dark gray. So what I mean is if I am zero, I'm going to return the background color of dark gray. And to get that, you're going to want to use this one right here. So dark gray. Uh, otherwise, uh, I might be the case. Of, let's see. I might want to choose this AC guy right here. So if I'm AC here, I can just return like this. And let's use the color of, I think it's light gray or just regular gray. doesn't really matter. And then finally, if I'm in the default case, I'm going to return the color of orange like so. Okay, this guy, I'm going to give it background color as the variable name. And it, you might be asking, well, uh, how do I use this background color here, right? Well, inside of our for each loop below, uh, we're accessing the raw value on button here. And then we have this background color that is uh, it's currently using the you know somewhat arbitrary value of yellow. Uh, I'm just going to punch in the button and background color. Uh, unfortunately, autocomplete doesn't really work that well in SwiftUI, so you just have to type out this code and pray that it actually compiles. And so what you see is that all of these buttons are now uh, appearing as this orange color. And that's because of this over here. I believe uh, we don't have any of these zero or AC values. So let me add in the other cases as well. Uh, right here is going to be one, uh, let's see, dot two right here and dot three. Uh, once you rerun this, you'll see that uh, the one, two, and three, they are going to return the dark gray color, giving you this value here. And then at the very top, so let me just define a couple more buttons for my grid. Uh, I think I want to use, uh, let's see, AC dot equals, not that, but plus minus, and also the percent, so dot percent. And finally, we have the dot division right here. And don't forget to include your comment. Uh, once you have those additional buttons, you can resume. You should get an additional row right here. Uh, you can see your AC is appearing in the light gray because of this case here. And then, uh, you know, you have to really type out each and every one of these guys, which is a little bit tedious, but uh, nonetheless, this is something that you have to do. Uh, percent, and then I believe things are looking a lot better. Okay, I uh, might want to fix the four, five, and six as well. Four, uh, five, and six. So six like that, and everything is uh, starting to take shape. I guess the colors are okay. And now the last thing we sort of want to talk about here is the actual string representation of these guys. Uh, so for example, we have AC as AC, we have the four, five, six as the numbers over here. Um, some of you guys that have a, a little bit more experience with SwiftUI can guess what I'm going to do. But essentially, uh, I want to add another variable on the uh, calculator button enum. And this guy is going to be the title string, and we are going to perform uh, something pretty similar. We're just going to switch on self, and if we are the zero, uh, we are going to, let's see, return the actual zero character. And I believe this should be fine. So right here, return AC maybe, and that looks okay. Uh, let's do this a couple of more times. So zero, let's say one and a two, and let's just make sure this is working. So zero, one, two, and the AC. And uh, now we have a couple of cases defined. I'm gonna use this title variable down in the for each loop here. So let's see, for each, we have the button raw value, and we have the title property now, which is what I can use here uh, once I hit resume you'll see the button slowly starting to show up with the actual string character 
that you define in your title enum. So right here. And obviously you're gonna have to type out the rest of this code, which is a little tedious, but uh, you know, this is something that you have to do. So one, two, what is it? Three, uh, four, uh, five, and six. So I'm just gonna do that for now. What is this? Three, four, and five, and six. I think that should be okay. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, you're gonna have to do the rest of these guys as well. So why don't we just make sure that we have the plus. This guy is the plus, and this guy is, let's say, minus, and this is the multiplication. All right, uh, let's see, what is this? Minus, minus is here, and this is the multiply. And I think for the most part, this is looking uh, pretty good. Uh, might as well do the plus, uh, plus minus. And again, this is pretty tedious, but I don't think there's an easier way of doing this. If there is, please let me know down in the comments below. Uh, percent is here. Okay, uh, this is uh, pretty close to where I wanna be. Um, obviously, if you wanna introduce more buttons, you can just copy this and paste that here. Uh, the nice thing about Swift UI is obviously, uh, whenever you add something, you can just rerun it in the preview and things just appear magically. It's pretty great, it's pretty awesome, and I'm really thankful that the Swift team <laughs> has developed this nice little feature. Okay, I believe I'm missing maybe seven, I think. So let's see, seven, seven, and that was okay. I guess you can add the eight and nine if you wanted to do so. Uh, let's just fix this as well. So seven, return the value of seven. I think that's okay. And here we need to just add the seven. So again, really tedious, but that's just something you have to do. You'll have to add the eight and nine later on your own time. And that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in today's video. Uh, if you want to transform these guys into, let's say, a button, so you know, if I click on these guys right here, so if I click on it, it actually doesn't uh, click down, so click down right here, it actually goes down. So how do I actually have this down state, right? Well, what you can do is inside of your H stack right here, uh, for each of your buttons, right? So this guy is the text with the button title, and here are the modifiers. Uh, you can just put all this in a button, so a button right here, and it has the action, and then just hit enter, enter. Uh, just dump all of this code inside of the button here, and it should be relatively okay. Um, I'm going to hit the stop, and let's hit the play. Hopefully this is gonna be fine. So hit down, down, and down, 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 and down. So not too bad in my opinion. Okay, so hopefully this code isn't too bad. And as you can see, building out an application inside of Swift UI is really easy. And you can just prototype out your UI very quickly using these uh, H stack, Z stack, V stacks, and buttons and text components. So with all that being said, I think I want to wrap up this video by uh, showing you guys the last row, which is a little bit tricky. So we have the zero, we have the dot, and we have the equal on the right side. Uh, how do I render out this last row, right? Well, why don't I go up to the buttons right here, and this looks pretty nice, right? This is very easy to read. Uh, I'm going to say dot zero, and let's say dot zero, dot zero, and let's say dot equals right here. Uh, hopefully I can get three zeros on the bottom and an equal sign on the right side. So AC is here. I think I want to do case uh, equals and just return uh, the equal sign over here. And that looks pretty good. I'll take care of the dot maybe later or in the next video. But what I really want to uh, change here is the zero needs to be twice the length or twice the width of a standard button. Uh, some of you guys might be able to guess the trick I'm going to use, but Basically, uh, the current frame is calculated here with the width and the height of a button width. So this function here, why don't I cheat a little bit and pass in the actual button? So calculator button does that. 
uh, once you introduce that, this could should break here. So one of the problems with Swift UI is that the errors are really confusing. And uh, if you look at this, there's no way that you can tell what's wrong with the code. So that's a problem with Swift UI that you have to deal with. And the actual error is this right here and just pass in the button like that. So this is the parameter right here. This button is actually the button that you're iterating over. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we'll fix this in here and also in here. And yeah, there you go. So again, Swift UI errors and you know the ID isn't all that helpful sometimes. Okay, so the code is working again. Is it in working condition? Yes, it is. We have the zero, zero, zero and the equal sign down below. Uh, last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the button width. I'm gonna check if the button is equal, equal the zero right here. And you know, you can return something crazy like 100, something like that. And your buttons are now really, really wide. So the trick here is to notice what the last row is comprised of. We have uh, only four gaps here, one, two, three, and four. So this makes the calculation with five gaps. Uh, what I'm gonna do is to copy this over, paste that in here, this should look the same now. I'm gonna take this down to four here. And then I am going to take this right here, which is still the value of four. I think I want to multiply this by two, I think. So hopefully that gives me something that I wanna use. So let's just return that value right here. And it, now these buttons are really, really wide. So the last thing I wanna do is to go down to this right here. So I'm gonna remove one of these zero values because I only have one of these zeros and this is actually the dot. So let's just make another case right here. Uh, where do we wanna put this guy? So let's just say case and dot, or maybe this is the decimal value. Okay, that is okay, so case dot decimal, and we're gonna use return the decimal right there. Uh, I think I wanna use the dot decimal here, and this should fix uh, most of the issues, so I'm going to rerun now. And uh, you'll see that this guy is really, really tall, but for the most part, the width is okay. Uh, all you have to do is to fix this guy's height. So what you wanna do is to make sure that when you calculate the height over here, you're actually using the button's width value, so you have to be a little bit smarter about that. And so to make this all work, I'm going to replace all of this right here with the simple calculation that I have down below there. So let's just grab this and put that in here and everything should work out perfectly. Uh, you'll see that the height value is correct. Uh, the width is using this calculation down here and all the buttons are just magically going to be drawn out correctly. Uh, you're gonna have to fix the AC here. Maybe this multiply needs to change to the X and this guy needs to be the dark gray color. But uh, I'll provide the code down below that has all the fixes. So, you know, you have to modify this guy a little bit more. Alrighty, everybody, that's gonna wrap it up for today's lesson. Uh, hopefully you guys learned a little bit more about how to use enums inside of Swift and also Swift UI development. Uh, source code for everything that you saw in today's video is down below. If you wanna learn more about Swift and iOS development, uh, there are courses down below as well. So I'm not really sure if I want to include another lesson on how to incorporate the handling of these buttons and making sure the calculation is correct. So for example, if you do nine times nine, do I really wanna show you guys how to do that? Uh, it's not super interesting, but if you guys wanna see that, please leave a comment down below. And uh, that's gonna be it for today. I will see you guys next time. Bye.